हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई डॉक्टर विनीता एंड वेलकम बैक टू द फिजियोथेरेपी जुनून चैनल टुडेज आर वीडियो ऑन द सर्वाइकल एक्सटेंशन सिंड्रोम एंड वी आर लर्निंग मूवमेंट सिस्टम सिंड्रोम्स ऑफ द सर्वाइकल स्पाइन मूवमेंट सिस्टम सिंड्रोम ऑफ द सर्वाइकल स्पाइन आर प्रेसिपिटेटेड बाय डेविएशन इन द अलाइनमेंट मूवमेंट पैटर्न्स ऑफ द सर्वाइकल स्पाइन सिंड्रोम इन ऑर्डर ऑफ फ्रिक्वेंसी एंड की फाइंडिंग सर्वाइकल एक्सटेंशन सिंड्रोम वट इज द सर्वाइकल एक्सटेंशन सिंड्रोम इन इंडिविजुअल फर्स्ट वी सी दैट इन पिक्चर यू सी द सर्वाइकल एक्सटेंशन and excessive cervical extension leads to the cervical extension syndrome a you see some pressure exerted and there is a hyper extension of the cervical spine or we can say the cervical spine extension syndrome in this video the cervical extension syndrome individual with minimal degeneration involving the cervical region the principal movement impairment in the cervical extension syndrome is precise cervical extension that is often associated associated with pain and limited range of motion there is a alter distribution of extension across the cervical region there is difference between the cervical vertebra and the extension occur at the cervical vertebra is different at the different reasons and an imbalance of muscle performance among the cervical extensors and flexors the extrinsic muscles contribute to excessive horizontal translation of the cervical vertebra rather than a combination of sagittal rotation produced by intrinsic cervical muscles so here we see that the extrinsic muscles contribute excessive horizontal translation but intrinsic cervical muscles and horizontal translation produced by the extrinsic cervical muscles contributing factors in the cervical extension syndrome include the weight of the upper extremity weight of the upper extremity and the alignment of the thoracic spine next is the thoracic region and third one is the alignment of the scapula so here three points basically thoracic spine thoracic spine second one is the alignment of scapula and weight of upper extremity so we proceed next there is a alter distribution of extension across the cervical region and an imbalance of muscle performance among the cervical extensor and flexors we see the contributing factors okay then we see the symptoms and history pain is typically located in the posterior cervical region because this is the extension syndrome with possible radicular symptoms what are the radicular symptoms mpt students know radicular symptoms but bpt student may be or may not be know the radicular symptoms when the uh, pain passes from the cervical region to the upper extremity like your hand that is called the radicular symptoms along the cervical nerve root dermatomes and or scapular region especially along the vertebral border like some patient saying that 
they having pain at the internal or medial border of the scapula in between the vertebra and the medial border of scapula the patient complains of pain with cervical spine extension and prolonged posturing of a forward head position working at computer or reading the patient can commonly have complaints of headaches located in the sub occipital regions key and test and signs alignment analysis alignment fault with cervical extension syndrome include a forward head position with an increase in the cervical lordosis and anterior translation patient with the diagnosis of cervicogenic headaches have an alignment of greater upper cervical spine extension here clearly mentioned that upper cervical spine extension are positioned in 10 degree of posterior sagittal extension as reference to the vertical plumb line if you measure from a vertical plumb line you see that the 10 degree of posterior sagittal extension typically in individual like older than 50 year of age the forward head alignment in a is a position of greater anterior translation in the lower cervical region uh, i can say that if uh, you watching my videos regularly in my past video you see the posterior forward head sorry forward head alignment syndrome okay so you can refer from them position of greater anterior translation in the lower cervical region and greater upper cervical sagittal extension as we know in the many literatures they is showing that degenerative changes are often present with increased age and will affect the alignment and loading of the joints with degeneration of cervical disc there is a narrowing of the intervertebral foramens and increase approximation and loading of the facet joints so here are three regions are clearly defined that one is the as factor which cause degeneration and degeneration cause the muscle imbalance so and second one is the loading over the facet joints are increase and the narrowing of the intervertebral foramens so three things we have mentioned here next we proceed to the movement impairment analysis individual with a cervical extension syndrome often complain of pain with movement into active extension during assessment of active cervical extension the younger spine like 50 to 25 year old may demonstrate a greater amount or a degree of posterior translation than posterior sagittal rotation or an excessive range of motion the older individual with spinal degeneration may have painful and limited extension because of starting alignment of a forward head position sorry for the external noise forward head position with excessive anterior translation the starting alignment of anterior translation like extended position we can say limit the available physiological motion into extension an addition or a additional movement impairment with active cervical extension include a faster rate of upper cervical extension movement compared to the observed in the lower cervical extension movements so patient with cervical extension syndrome may also demonstrate movement impairment during flexion 
active flexion motion can be limited so we have to check the extension as well as the flexion movement active flexion motion can be limited and painful particularly when the degree of anterior translation is excessive and relatively greater than the normal anterior sagittal rotation then we proceed to the faulty movement or we can say the faulty movement of a forward translation without coupled motion of sagittal rotation here is a pure forward translation not uh, coupling of the movement coupling of the movement is the mixing of two movements okay when we are doing extension as well as, as well as we are doing rotation so this is the coupling movement but here we can say that faulty movement of a forward translation without coupled motion of sagittal rotation result in the approximation of the facet joint surface approximation of the facet joint surface during performance of this faulty flexion movement result in similar approximation of facet joint surfaces as that occurring during cervical extension as well as complaint of pain similar to those during active extensions in this system the primary test is performed by asking the patient to perform the movement in desired direction such as cervical extension or rotation during the movement the therapist ask about symptoms and carefully observe the characteristics of the movements carefully observe the movement and frequently ask the questions to the patient about the symptoms for the secondary test the therapist has the patient correct the starting alignment and the movement fault and notes the effect on the symptoms the correct alignment and movement pattern is repeated a number of times okay to ensure the improvement in symptoms is consistent the repetition also help the patient learn how to move correctly and how to control the symptoms so we have to repeat the movement we have to observe the symptoms we have to observe the pain of the patient and teach the patient a correct pattern of movement to further control the symptoms like sitting test sitting test should be performed in active cervical range of motion like flexion extension and rotation secondary test correction of the alignment correction of the alignment if there is a pain at rest then correction of the forward head alignment of the cervical spine may alleviate or decrease the symptoms to correct the head neck alignment the alignment of the thoracic spine and scapula must also be corrected why this is show because the thoracic spine and the scapula and the weight of the head directly impact your neck pain or extension syndrome next is the passive elevation of the shoulder girdle passive elevating the shoulder girdle supporting the weight of upper extremity before the patient for perform active cervical extension flexion rotation may elevate or decrease the symptoms often result in increased cervical range of motion and typically a decreased level of reported pain during motion then the passive support of upper extremity can reduce the passive stretch of the upper trapezius and levator scapulae which can potentially reduce the loading and posterior shear forces on the structures of the cervical spine the passive support typically result in increased range of motion and less painful movement because you are giving a passive support to the upper extremity like passive elevation of rib cage performing the rest of the passive elevation of the rib cage 
is indicated in patient with well developed abdominals particularly the rectus abdominis passive elevation of rib cage will often improve active cervical range of motion and decrease the pain then the supine test in supine test patient is supine line and here we also do the active cervical flexion manual muscle test of the cervical flexion and in secondary test we will correct the performance of the cervical flexion and this will uh, we can do in the prone and quadrip test the patient should be in quadrupod position okay and in prone and we see the flexion movement and extension movement secondary test like uh, correction of the cervical extension same in the quadrupod test then we proceed to the treatment part the treatment part is the goal of treatment of the cervical extension syndrome is to diminish the cervical extension movements first we settle the goal and our goal is to diminish the cervical extension movements and forces during daily activities all exercise and functional instruction include improving the alignment and movement impairment are clearly described okay to the patient exercise program sitting with back to the wall we can say capital flexion of the cervical spine the upper extremity are supported on a pillow to diminish the compressive loading of the cervical spine from the transfer of weight of the upper extremity to the cervical region through the cervical scapular muscle attachment each patient need to be assessed for a specific alignment impairment at the lumbar and thoracic spine and scapulothoracic region so your assessment should be good in all the parts because if your assessment is good then only you can proceed to a good treatment the patient is then instructed in strategies to precisely precisely correct alignment fault in these regions and proceeding with the cervical movements the key instruction for faulty alignment of scapula is depression is to elevate the acromion towards the ears and key instruction for the position of the scapula downward rotation is to elevate the acromion towards the ears and then slightly adduct the scapula so two point here scapular depression then only elevate the acromion towards the ear if there is scapular downward rotation what you can teach elevate the acromion towards the ear and then slightly adduct the scapula towards your body adduct it towards your body instruction for faulty position of excessive abduction like 3 inches from the spine would be to squeeze the shoulder blades together the ideal position of the scapula would be the vertebral border of the scapula oriented in a vertical position or slight upward rotation second the scapula position 2.5 to 3 inches from vertebral spine third the scapula position between t2 and t7 four one 10 degree of anterior tilt fifth one 30 to 40 degree of internal rotation there is five points you have to assess to the patient if these are not to the point or not to the mark then you have to correct the position of the scapula the next part the patient in instructed to place his her head close to the wall and perform capital head flexion the patient is encouraged to roll the head and chin towards the base of the anterior neck 
while trying to maintain the head close to the wall so patient have to do two tasks one he, ha he she have to close the head to the wall and do the anterior movement of the neck okay the vertebral vertebral cue to roll the head is increase recruitment of the intrinsic cervical muscle so we have to recruit recruitment of the intrinsic cervical muscle to perform sagittal rotation rather than anterior translation many patient report a tightening in the front of the cervical spine reason while performing this exercise this sensation is most likely the muscle in the front of the neck being appropriately recruited so don't worry and do your task and specifically the muscles are being recruited in a shortened position rather than the lengthened position in addition patient also report a stretch or a pull down the proximal posterior cervical region that can extend into the central upper thoracic region again this is appropriate stretch to the posterior structures so you are at the right path do this and recruit the muscle and perform the task there should be no pain along the vertebral border of the scapula this have to be cautious so patient should if patient saying i having pain near the vertebral border of scapula then you have to stop there and again perform the movement the patient is encouraged to maintain appropriate alignment of the adjacent regions during the movement of the cervical spine so that the adjacent regions not hinders the movement this exercise can best be performed in sitting but if the patient has difficulty to maintain or symptoms occurs the therapist should reassess whether this exercise in this position is appropriate for the patient or not radiation of the symptoms indicate that exercise should be made easier by performing the same movement in a in supine position with the with the support of arm with pillow or using the hand to assist the movement then we proceed the strengthening of the intrinsic spy, uh, spinal flexors in supine and capital flexion without held tilt because in past we are tilting the head anteriorly the patient should feel a stretch down the central posterior cervical region and muscle recruit recruitment of the anterior intrinsic cervical spine flexures then strengthening of the intrinsic cervical spine in prone position patient should be in prone position and patient do the extension movement the prone cervical extension with emphasis on the sagittal rotation and uh, strengthening of the deep cervical flexures or we will do these exercise in quadruped position you see in the picture and uh, here the flexion a passively giving but patient can do actively these movements here you see actively patient doing the movement then in quadruped position we already mentioned then sitting back to wall and shoulder abduction lateral rotation sitting back to the wall like if this is the wall patient sitting here and hand should be supported by the wall and shoulder is abduction position and lateral rotation these are the movements which are performed by the patient with the help of therapist 
and uh, repeat these movements like first in the 10 times then proceed to the 15 times 20 times and so on so we have to strengthen the intrinsic cervical muscles and extrinsic cervical muscle first uh, we learn the how to recruit the muscles and then we understand how to perform the exercises like wall slide facing the wall shoulder flexions all the movements are necessary and there you see the quadrupod position and prone position cervical extension strengthening thank you for watching this video if you have any queries or if you have any doubt in this session please comment like share and subscribe my video and thank you so much today i completed 195 subscribers please share my videos so that i will be encouraged to work hard thank you so much